In this video, I will show you how to make a wrist corsage that can be worn without ribbons. If you want to make one that can be tied round the wrist with a piece of ribbon, you can check out my previous video. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Janet and this is where I talk about silk flowers and weddings. As I've mentioned in the previous video, this will not be a hot glue everything type of tutorial. You will need to have basic wiring and taping skills. If you haven't already learned that, I have a video on that which you can check out by clicking the link at the top right corner or down in the description box below. Without further ado, let's quickly go through the tools that you will need before we start. You will need some floral wires. I use the 30 gauge for wiring my flowers and leaves and the 24 gauge for the base of my corsage. You will also need some wire cutting pliers a pair of scissors and some floral tape. You will need at least two to three types of flowers, a type of filler and a type of leaf for a decent modern corsage. Size-wise, you can choose to have a focal flower like I do here or you can choose to have all ditzy tiny flower buds which will give you a delicate bracelet as a result. It's completely up to you. In order to save your time, I have already wired and taped the components I need for the corsage. For this type of corsage, you will need a lot more components than the previous one because the surface it covers is a bit bigger. And as always, I have already hit seal the edges of my flower petals to stop them from fraying. Let's get started by making the base. First, take two pieces of floor wire in 24 gauge. I take a piece to wrap around my wrist to measure the length I need. Note that you need an extra 2.5 to about 3.5 cm for it to work. I cut the wire and make the other piece in the same length. Then I use floral tape to tape them together. Next, I use the end of a paintbrush to help me shape the wire. You can also use a pencil to help you with that. Leaving about a centimeter at the end, I bend the wire into a U shape and I use my fingernail to bend the end slightly to make it like a hook. Then I press the end down and tape it down. This will be the eye of our hook and eye mechanism. Next, I need to quickly show you how I cut my floral tapes in halves. Using the tape in half width will give your product a much slimmer finish and it will also save you quite a bit of money in the long run. On my left hand, I have a long strip of tape folded into a stack. Then I use my pair of scissors to cut it into halves. With the half tape ready, we are ready to start taping away. I start taping a couple of rounds just a bit below the eye that I've created earlier, then add in a tiny leaf to cover the eye. When taping, make sure you are taping the wire stems of your components rather than the stock or you will not be able to adjust the position of your components later. I tape a couple of rounds to make sure the leaf stays in place securely. Then I add in another tiny leaf sitting slightly lower than the previous one. Again, taping one round, two rounds. I do that to every component that is added to the base. Then I add a tiny bit of berries. Now I want to add some more berries, but then I found that my tape is a centimeter away from where the wire stem starts. I figure out what I want to place on the right side first, then I take them off and get my tape to where I want it to be, which is further down the base. I add the white rosebud in and make sure it is sitting below the berries. 
then I add the berries back on the left. When adding components, make sure you cover up the stalks of the previous ones. I'm moving on to the bigger components now with a larger leaf and a ranunculus bud. I don't know if you've noticed yet, I add in my components by alternating left and right. Next, I add more berries. And a leaf. And more berries to fill the space. Then a tea rose bud on the right. And a tiny tea rose on the left. Now you can see I've strategically placed all my components in different levels. None of them lined up. And you don't want your leaves to be parallel or looking symmetrical, or it will look unnatural. Then I add in bigger leaves for my focal flower to sit on. Here comes my focal flower, a white tea rose. If you have enjoyed watching this video so far, please hit the like button for me. You have no idea how much that would mean to me. And if you want to watch more videos like this, click the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos later. From this point onwards, I want my components to point in the other direction. So I will bend their wire stems before I add them in. So I've added another leaf. And a small ranunculus. And from this point onward, I've taken out the footage of me taping the components to save your time. Next, some berries. Another leaf. And a tiny tea rose. and more berries to fill the space. Now's the time to taper the wire stems. Trim the ends so they all end in different lengths, so you can get a smooth and slim finish when taped. Then I keep adding more components to the cassage. A tiny ranunculus bud and a tiny tea rose bud. Two leaves more berries and I finish off with two tiny leaves. tapering of the wire stems and then I tape all the way to the end with full width tape. And that's it! Now I need to gently bend the corsage into a curve so I can wear it. When bending, 
I adjust the position of the flowers and leaves so the mechanics are hidden out of sight. It's finished now, and you can see this side is where I had started, with the components overlapping more. And this is the bit towards the end, where the components are a bit more spaced out. Now I will show you how to wear it. I put the end bit through the eye, which we have created in the very beginning of the video, and bend it with my fingers to create a hook to fasten it. Then I can hide the eye and hook underneath the tiny leaves. I have deliberately chosen to use tiny components for the inside of the wrist, so they wouldn't get in the way when the wearer put her hand down. Now that I've shown you two ways of making wrist corsages, which way would you prefer? Let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments as well. Did you know that corsages can also be pinned on the chest? Yep, for the ladies, they are still called corsages, not boutonnieres. And technically, they look quite different from boutonnieres. In the next video, I will show you how to make pin-on corsages, which would go well on dresses with wider shoulder straps and also on suit jackets. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.